thank you so much for joining me. Can you please share a little bit about the work that you do and how you started to get involved in it? I'm Claire Cox. Um, I co-lead the Georgia Stop Coalition. It's a grassroots coalition of about 30 organizations in the state of Georgia and really only came to the menstrual equity, equity space in about 2017, so only for about four years. When did you first become aware of period poverty or menstrual equity? I'm a little embarrassed to say that I didn't become aware uh, of period poverty um, until an advocacy interest in uh, elimination of taxation on period products. And that was in early 2018, the end of 17 and early 18. Um, and when I realized how insulated I was from the issue, it actually was very unsettling to me. I'm the mother of two uh, daughters who grew up in the public school systems in Macon, Bibb County, which is one of the, the poorest areas in the state. And yet going through that school system and working actively, this is just not something I ever heard about. And so to come to this space in 2018, when we were at one of the Alliance for Period Supplies summits and start hearing about supply issues for students, supply issues in, in, in the state prisons and all, it, it really was unsettling to me and, and heartbreaking to me that I had been so unaware of such an important issue for all of those years. Have you been affected by this issue? And if so, how? And I haven't been personally, and I think that's what made me um, so insulated from it and, and, and sad that I was. Um, it's not something that I had to deal with. Um, my family certainly wasn't wealthy, but we never had problems with obtaining products or, or, or having food on our table. Upon reflections, how have your attitudes about menstruation changed throughout your life? It, it's devastating to grow up and be 60 years old and realize how little you know about the world. From having a complete acceptance and acquiescence to that menstruation is an unspoken topic or, or taboo subject, to seeing the damage that that's caused in, in through the years and, and even in my lifetime, in the mental and physical development um, of young women and others who bleed and in our public policy, um, in relationships between um, men and women and their understanding and valuing of each other. Just the fact that it was okay with me all these years, that menstruation isn't something we talk about versus mm -hmm. everybody needs to be talking about it kind of attitude now that I have. Mm -hmm. um, it matters to everybody and it matters in all public spaces and in the policy that we're making as a state and as a nation. What are your hopes for young activists like me and so many others who want to get involved in the menstrual equity space? And do you have any words of wisdom? Work collaboratively. Don't work competitively. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about you or me or any other leader in a group. It's about resolving these problems and we can learn from other leaders. We can share what we have learned. Uh, Georgia Stomp's whole philosophy has been about growing this coalition and raising up and making all voices be able to be heard. Change takes time. Um, people, you need to give people time to have awareness, education, and change of heart about some of these issues. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that happen. That's been the exciting part for, for all the activists that are, especially the young ones. I mean, y'all are the voice of the new movement. It's so cliche to say you're the future, but the attitudes, the experiences, the understandings, the lack of acceptance of things that are wrong um, that you're experiencing and working in now just give me great hope. <laughs>